You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. When facing difficult times and hard decisions, there's only one thing guaranteed to keep us grounded. Our faith in Jesus Christ. A faith that works when life doesn't. A faith that works when life doesn't. Well, thank you for joining us here. And, and that's what we're going to be talking about here in the next little while. Thanks, guys, for putting that together and reminding us that of our troubles in life and, and how we can approach God, we can approach the Bible and find solution to a lot of those problems. What we're going to be talking about in the next little while is that idea of faith that works when life doesn't. And it comes from the study that I did in the book of James. Now, interestingly enough, James, he was the half-brother of Jesus. And he wrote this letter to the Christians at this time. And the context of the letter, I think, is really appropriate to what we're living in right now and what we're dealing with in life. It was meant as a letter of encouragement to the Christians at, at the time. And it's meant as a letter of encouragement to ourselves as well. You see, the context of the book of James in the Bible is this. At the time, Christians were being persecuted, were coming under all this pressure to conform to the Roman society at the time. And not only were they persecuted by the Romans at that time, but also by the Jewish Pharisees at the time for their alignment with Jesus. As a result of that persecution, all of the churches, all of the people in the churches that were there at the time, and this is just after Jesus had been crucified, the churches were starting to grow, come together, as we know from the book of Acts, and those got dispersed throughout the area. So they weren't able to actually come together anymore. That persecution also affected people, their ability to get jobs. They weren't even actually able to uh, feed themselves or find gainful employment in order to be able to take care of their families as a result of aligning with Jesus. And some of the persecution got so bad that it was violent and also you know, harmful to people's bodies as well as people even being killed as a result of that. And this is the context of this book of James. And I couldn't help but notice the parallels that the Christians at that time were going through. They're similar in some ways to what we are going through, this idea that we can't gather together as, as believers, that you know, work right now is hard to find. Maybe right now you are listening to this and you're saying, I, I can't find a job, or my job got downsized because of COVID. So all these different trials and tribulations, these challenges were coming against the Christians at that time. And here James writes this letter to give them some encouragement. And as I said, I couldn't help but notice these parallels between their lives and a little bit of what our lives are dealing with right now. And how those parallels and then what he's telling the Christians then would apply to us as well today. To give us hope in the midst of challenges that we're facing, to have a faith that works when life doesn't. So let me read this passage to you that we're going to start in in the book of James for this series. And if you have your Bible, I encourage you to turn to the book of James because we're going to be in here for a little while in our sermon series. And I want you to bookmark it so that you can reference it back again when, one, when we go back to it again on other Sundays. And it's in the book of James and it's near the end of the Bible, very close to the last few books of the Bible. And so you'll find it at the top uh, of the pages where you'll see the big title letters and it's called James. And we're going to start right at the beginning. And it's James chapter 1. It says this, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produce, produces perseverance let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking 
anything. You know, it's interesting when I was studying this scripture and see how it might apply to my life and our lives. The first thing that James says when he's trying to give people encouragement is he wants us to consider it pure joy when we face trials. Obviously, they were facing a massive trial in their life at that time, and being aligned with Jesus was actually harmful to them. I'd like to tell you about one of the trials that I faced, one of the more difficult ones that I've ever done in my life, and I actually signed up for it. It was quite a few years back, but I I, I decided that I wanted to challenge myself with my friends, and we decided to sign up for a Spartan race. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with that, so I'll really be very brief about it, but the Spartan race is this race that you do. It's a five to seven kilometer challenge in which you're running against other competitors to be the best time. And through that challenge, there's a number of obstacles that you actually have to perform to get to the end. One of the more famous ones in the Spartan race is the idea of going through, running through mud. You know, and you have to go through this waist deep mud at times to go through this. And so by the end of the race, you're just absolutely covered in sweat and mud. But a number of the other challenges that are in this race are uh, such as climbing a rope up 20 feet. You have to go up to the top and then come back down again. You have to scale a wall that's about eight feet tall and you go over top of that. One of them, I actually had to take a bow and arrow and shoot an arrow at a target before I could move on to the next challenge. I remember crawling at some points where I was crawling through and there was barbed wire or wire above my back, very low, and so I had to stay on the ground to get through this thing. And remember, this is all time, and so we're going as fast as we absolutely can. Now, friends, remember this. I actually signed up for this challenge. I wanted to do this, this trial. Well, let me fast forward to the end of the challenge. As I crossed the finish line, I had twisted my ankle, I sprained my knee and I pulled the tendons on both my ACL and MCL. As I had climbed over the wall, this eight foot wall, I pulled my back so bad that I was having trouble breathing. And because of all the mud and the dust challenges about dragging up these sandbags up these dirty hills, I I was blowing out of my nose for two weeks, mud and dirt. And you know what friends I got at the end? A $5 medal. What do you think about when you hear the word word trial? What does that word evoke in your life? Are you like me? Did you ever sign up for a trial in your life where you thought, yeah, this is a really good idea? Maybe maybe you're, you're dealing with a trial right now in your own life. It's a challenge that you're faced with and And when you hear that word earlier that we said, when when James said to consider it pure joy, does that actually make you a little anxious when you hear that word trial? Because certainly what you're going through right now isn't pure joy. In fact, if you could choose, you'd rather not go through the trial at all if you had the choice. Well, we're gonna be talking about and looking at this passage, and what we wanna do and investigate this is we're gonna try to understand why it is that James asks us to consider something pure joy. What is it that he's wanting us to consider pure joy? How is it that he wants us to do this, and why? So let's look at that, that what is it that James wants us to consider, this idea of trials. And if you look at your passage here, it's in James, and I've got my iPad, and so we're gonna put this on the screen for you to see, because I wanna really highlight some words that are part of this. So that first part that of, of what is it that he's talking about? What is it that, what trials are? So consider it pure joy, My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials, and that first word I want you to focus on where it says whatever. So I'm gonna underline that here, whenever you face trials. So here's the first point, friends, and I want you to write this down. Trials, problems, they are inevitable. It doesn't matter who you are. You cannot avoid trials, problems, challenges in your life. 
You can't get around them. You can't get through them at times. You can't go over them or sneak away from them or avoid them. They come at you when you are strong, when you are weak, when you are young, when you are old. You will never be able to avoid trials in your life. So that's the first thing that James wants us to consider is that whenever, trials are always gonna be part of your life. The next thing he says in that passage is that whenever you face trials of many kinds, I'm gonna circle that one because that's kind of cool. So many kinds of trials. See, problems, challenges, trials in your lives, they are variable. They are variable. First of all, they're inevitable. Secondly, they are variable. What does that mean? Sometimes trials come at you in different ways. Sometimes it's in your work environment, dealing with other personalities and people. Sometimes that's a trial that can come into your life. Sometimes they're brought on by our own slip-ups, our own mistakes, our own sins at times. We, we create scenarios where this is gonna be a challenge going forward. Sometimes it's brought on by people that in their own sinful ways, they do something that's gonna affect you dramatically in a way, and it's gonna bring a trial or a challenge into your life. Sometimes it's, it's our bodies. I mean, we live in a fallen world, and because of that fallen world, our bodies at times will betray us, and that can be a challenge for your life as well, or a trial for your life. Sometimes it's like, as being in this fallen world, sometimes it's external, like it's our own nature itself. It's the environment. Say you're a farmer and you've got a field and you planted something and then all of a sudden you get this hail damage that destroys a lot of your crops. You didn't have enough insurance to be able to cover that and then you're impacted financially. Your, your ability to make money at this, you're impacted by an external source. Sometimes that's the trial that happens in your life. And that's what, what James here is saying is that they are variable. They come at you at all different sorts of ways. Sorts of ways. He goes on to say this. That was number two, right? Problems are variable. Thirdly, problems test our faith. And I'm just going to underline that one, right? Where he says that in that same passage, he says, problems, they know that the testing of your faith produces, right? So there's a testing that takes place with challenges at times. Now, I want you to reconsider as we go forward that word testing, because I'm not sure that it's the best word here to describe what James wants us to understand. Remember, this is a, an interpretation of the Greek language of the Bible, and there's other interpretations here that would suggest that that word testing is more like challenge, more like a challenge. The reason why I think it, that's important is maybe if you can follow along with my thinking here. When I hear about that word testing of faith, sometimes it makes me think, well, it, it, is, if there's a testing of faith, there must be a tester. And in that case, then there, that tester, because it's these challenges in life that can be dramatic, that tester must be God. And if God is the tester, and I'm going through these challenges, he's bringing them on, it, it feels a bit like a pass or a fail sort of a system, right? Where, where he's testing my faith and, and, and he's sitting there trying to see, well, did he pass this test that I sent him? Or did, did she pass this test or fail this test? that I just sent, almost like this idea that God is up there going, fail, 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 pass, mm, sort of, fail. And I don't think that that's what James wants us to understand God, nor do I want you to understand God in that capacity. How I think it looks more is that the idea of the challenges of your faith, it reminds me a little bit more of that illustration of my son. You know, I remember going when he was really little, we put him in hockey. And we would take him to practices at times and they would put the little pylons out and he'd have to skate through all the pylons back and forth like this. And as you know, he was doing this or, or at other times, he'd go down the ice and the coach would pass him a puck and slowly if he, sometimes he caught it, sometimes he didn't, but he would take that puck and then shoot it into the net if he could. And there was all these drills going on repeatedly over and over and over again. But friends, the drills weren't the fun part of the time in hockey. The drills didn't exist for the drill's sake alone. They were meant to develop skills in order for him to play the game and play it well. 
Similar to my daughter, when she was back in grade one and grade two, I remember them, my daughter coming with the books of, from the teachers and they would have the little dots printed out of all the letters of the alphabet, pages of like the letter B. And they'd all be these little dots. And, and my daughter had to take her pen and trace along the dots in order to make the B. And she'd go to the next B and the next B, trying to stay within the lines of the dots, right? And it was this repetitive test that she had to do, this trial, this challenge that she had to do in order for her to learn how to write. See, the purpose of it wasn't the test itself, but the purpose of it was that she could have the skills, the intuitive ability to be able to write after the fact. I think that when James is saying this line when he says that the testing of your faith, I think the challenge of your faith, it's meant in a different capacity that we can look at these trials more as a challenge instead of a test. So that's, like I wanted to say, go, go back to what I'm, where I'm following along with our thought process today is that James, right, is saying how, or what it is we're talking about when it comes to trials and trials are a challenge. The fourth thing about trials is this. The testing of your faith produces, okay? So this is James 1, 2 to 4. Testing of your faith produces. And I think this is sort of, when I I was thinking about this and and, and reflecting on how, how we can get across this idea is that the idea that James here is trying to present, that I'm trying to present is that that trials in your life produce. And they can produce either a great outcome or a poor outcome. How we process those trials in our lives can either make us better or make us bitter. Bitter, what I mean by that is sort of reacting to these challenges in life that is a way, in a way that is contrary to how Jesus might want you to react. You know, that saying that was back a few years ago, what would Jesus do, right? That idea that these trials, these challenges, produce something in your life. And you can either choose to make it a better production or a bitter production in your life. So trials produce. And finally, what James is saying about trials is that they produce perseverance. Another way to look at the word perseverance is endurance. Problems can develop endurance. Trials, challenges can develop endurance. And isn't it true whenever you have a challenge, say a race, say in your life you want to run a marathon. And we'll say it's a half marathon just for all of us here. I am not a runner, so I certainly want to do something less than a full one. But I wouldn't go out tomorrow and try to run competitively a 10 kilometer race. I would have to build up some endurance so I could get up to that 10 kilometer point in a reasonable amount of time. And that's what challenges can do. And that's what James is telling us. The challenges also have the ability to produce endurance in our life. And sixthly, what do trials, challenges do? Sixthly is this. They produce endurance so that you may be, you may be mature and complete. You may be mature and complete. So James is telling us that trials in our lives, challenges in our lives can actually create maturity and being a complete human being. So what James here is asking us to think about is, this is what challenges are. And James is saying, I want you to consider what I just shared with you about what they are, and I want you to consider it to be pure joy. Pure joy. So how do we do that? How do we make challenges that we face in our lives pure joy? And uh, let's fix that here. So how do we do this? First of all, this one, change your perspective on life as a test. You know, this took me a little while. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest to, to really think this through about what does life mean as a believer? 
do I think that God created me to put me in this world in, in all of these scenarios that I, I find myself in? Did he actually create me just to throw tests at me all the time and see whether or not I pass or fail? And I wanna I want honestly ask you the same thing, like really think through quickly, why do you think Jesus, why do you think God made you? What, what is the purpose for your existence? And I think I, it took me a little bit, a, a bit, a bit of time to think through that. I'm wondering if I didn't at times think that, yeah, like, you know, I, I'm here, you know, my, my, my end goal, my end purpose of life is actually heaven. And so anything that kind of comes along that, that, that's sort of difficult, it's just God up there saying pass or fail. And, and I had to correct myself because that's not what Jesus even says about why he is in this world, why God is in this world. You know, it says this in John 10.10, 10, if, if you guys could put that up for us to see. John 10.10, 10, and, it, and it says this, the thief comes only to steal, slaughter, and destroy. I've come that they may have life and have it abundantly. So John 10.10, 10, the thief comes, Satan, the devil, he comes into your life to steal, to destroy, to slaughter. But Jesus is saying, I've come to give you life abundantly. See, Jesus's goal and purpose wasn't, God's goal and purpose wasn't here. He didn't create you just to go through a series of tests in life, but he created you to enjoy life, to enjoy it abundantly. See, life isn't just about a test. That's not why he created you. And so what I'm asking you to do is begin to reflect on your life and change your idea that, that, that life is only about going through these challenges all the time. But Jesus created you for abundance, so change your thinking. Allow that thinking to make you better, not bitter. The second thing I think James wants us to consider when, when we're trying to reshift our thinking about challenges is, is this. I think about challenges in this way now, and that's like, think of it almost like going to the gym as a workout or a pump up. You know, this idea in my mind is that when a challenge comes your way, and, and we have this in the Bible where, where God tells us, and Jesus tells him as himself, this is the better way to live. This is the better way to react when difficult things are coming in our lives. We're human beings, and we often at times do things our own way. We often choose to do things that, A, are, are gonna be vindictive for ourselves or feel like we're, we're, we're doing something more just than maybe the way Jesus wants us to do that. Like for instance, somebody comes against you and remember it says in the Bible, we're talking about forgiveness and how we're to forgive 70 times seven. Man, that's a lot of times, right? And Jesus is saying that to us. And I think at times, and I've been guilty of this as well, where you know, I've wanted to t take justice into my own hands. Well, man, you really hurt me, and I want to hurt you back because that's going to make me feel better. And Jesus is saying, that's not the way you want to live life. And inevitably, that desire for vengeance, for justice, is actually going to ruin your life. That's going to be something that's going to hold on to you and bring you down. So I want you to do it a better way. And so when we, those challenges come at us, where God is asking us to walk in a better way, to do things in a better way, when that stuff is coming at us there, I, I look at it now more like this is a challenge for me to do it the better way. And that I'm building up stamina, endurance, so that the next challenge that comes, the ones that's even more difficult, where somebody really hurts me really bad, I can, I can say, hey, I, 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 be, I challenged myself that one small hurt. I got through that, I did it the better way. But now I, I've now done it. Now I'm, I'm, there's a bigger hurt and I'm, I'm willing to now try to do it Jesus' way so that I can, like I said, if, if the challenge, if we look at it like it's a workout or a pump up, then we're building this endurance of Christian faith into our lives. So when we hit these challenges over and over again, as James promises that we're all gonna do, we're gonna be able to navigate those through this lens of Christianity and do them even better. And what's the purpose of doing it better? Because James, Jesus himself reminds us that following Jesus, doing it his way, is the abundant life. Sarah, won't you join us on stage? The third thing, how do we change from 
avoiding challenges to considering it pure joy is the third thing when we face challenges, trials, tests in our lives, we ask God for wisdom. It says this in James 1.6. It says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. When you ask, you must believe, right? So Jesus is saying, James is saying in this passage right here, he's saying to you, when you face these challenges, you can go to God about them. And how do we go to God? First of all, we look through the word and we say, Jesus, I am facing something here that's really difficult. Maybe, I'm gonna give you a scenario here and this is just off the top of my head here, but I'm thinking maybe you're at your job at work and you could do something at your work that would benefit you monetarily we'll say but in order to do that you have to do something that's wrong that would be maybe considered illegal and if not illegal we'll say maybe frowned upon right well where do you find the how do you know to make a right decision how do you go about doing that and and what James is saying in here is that we go to God and first of all we can find that information in the Bible itself We can also ask God himself. We ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, show me what to do in the middle of this trial that I'm facing right now. How do I navigate this? And that's what the promise is that James is telling you, he's telling me, it's great news, is that we can consider it joy because Jesus is gonna give you the wisdom in order to move from doing the wrong thing to doing the right thing as you face that challenge and let it be reflective of the faith that's inside. And the the last thing, on the how, how do we consider it pure joy? Is that James is reminding us to trust God, to trust God, and that's exciting news, friends, because when we are facing these challenges, when we ask Jesus help us to get through this, we're gonna do the right thing, we're trusting God that in doing the right thing, he's gonna be providing for us a more abundant life, the right way to live, because that's what he's wanting for us in our lives. So friends, why? Why do I bother to consider it pure joy when I face these things? And like I said, the things that we are facing, right? They're inevitable, they're variable, they test us, they produce perseverance, endurance in our lives, and they can mature our character. So that's the what, right? The how, how do they do these things? Well, when we align ourselves with Jesus, when we ask God for wisdom, when we work through these things and and start small and doing the right thing, when we hit these challenges and continue to build up our faith as we do the other things, that's the how of we get there. But why do we wanna do this? Why do we wanna do this? Friends, I wanna go back to what we talked about when I shared that story of being in the Spartan race. You know, I I shared with you all the difficulties that I faced at the end of it, but I didn't share you what I learned from it. Friends, you know what I learned? Is that I could do a challenge. I I did this challenge and I worked hard at viewing and I got to the end of the race in a reasonable time. time. So I, I, I found that out about myself. There was this determination that I found out that I didn't have. This perseverance that I found out in my training You know, that's better body image. As I was training for this, you know, I was working out a lot and I was gaining muscle mass and strength, feeling good about myself. That was one of the, one of the benefits to me taking on this challenge that I did. And finally, the pride of being able to finish something and accomplish something. Had I not ever embraced that challenge of that race that I did, I never would have had those feelings that self-worth that you can gain from embracing that challenge. So friends, when you embrace a challenge, when you have challenges that are inevitable in your life, when you reframe them under God's lens, that he wants an abundant life for you, that's what he wants for you. When you reframe it and say, this is a challenge that God wants, he wants me to live it out this way, so that when I actually hit a challenge that's really, really difficult, that I'm gonna be able to follow God's plan because I know God's plan is having an abundant life for me. And that's what he wants for you. 
You know, I'm reminded at the very end here, friends, there's this passage in James 1, 12, and it says this, blessed is the one who perseveres, right? Who has endurance under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Friends, that is the promise, that is the abundance, that is the adventure. So friends, consider tests, consider challenges, trials to be pure joy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and and reminded that challenges always come into our lives. And it's difficult at times following your path. It's difficult because at times it feels like the easier route to not go the way that you want us to live. At times it feels like it's easier to do the wrong thing than it is to do the right thing. But we're reminded, Lord, that Jesus, this life wasn't just a test to get through. It wasn't just now. But Lord, you wanted us to have abundance in our lives. You wanted to have blessing in our lives. And you remind us that following your path is the way to that life. Man, Lord, that's what I want for my life. I want abundance in my life. And Jesus, I want you to help me when I face those challenges in my life to work out, to to face it as a challenge that I might grow in my faith and be even more strong when I face the next challenge in my life. So help me to do that. Help me to be that person, Lord. And thank you for the abundance that you've promised in this world, but also in the world to come. Amen. Well, friends, if you're listening right now and and you're on the radio or you're watching online, online right now, and maybe this is the first time you've ever heard about this idea about life, that God actually wants an abundant life for you now, today. Man, that is great news, and I can't help but share it with you today. And, and really, friend, it comes down to this. Do you want this abundant life for yourself, or do you want to keep living life the way you're doing it, and no matter what the cost is? When you hit challenges that are inevitably going to come, you're like, I'm going to do it my way and no other way. Well, friends, I want to tell you there's a better way, and that's by surrendering yourself to allowing Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Really, what that means, friends, is that when you allow Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you're, surrender, you're trying to walk like Jesus. You're trying to be reflective of, of what he did in his life. What would Jesus do in this scenario? That's what I want to do, Jesus, because I know you've shown me that it leads to an abundant living here and now today. So, friends, that's what it is. When you want to accept Jesus, you just surrender your life to him and say, Jesus, I want to follow things your way. But I think the first thing we have to recognize, friends, is this. Jesus came into this world so that he could reconcile a relationship to God with you. You see, God, we, have to, we believe, Lord, that, he, that God is, is, is above all things and he is holy, much better, the best person, the best... Uh, he is <laughs> greater than anything we could even dream up in our own minds of how great he is. And because of that greatness of who he is, because of who he is as as a holy person or as a holy being, because of that, he had to send Jesus in this world because we, we couldn't even stand to be in his presence if we were to come as ourselves. And so that's why Jesus came into this world. It's a recognition that we are sinful people, that we've done things wrong in life. But God loved you so much that Jesus came into this world to reconcile that relationship so that you could have relationship with him. And so that first step is just saying, Jesus, God, please forgive me of my sins. And I ask you to come into my heart, to guide me in my path going forward. I wanna realign myself with you and what your best is for my life, that abundant life that you're promising. Well, if you did that, if you said, yes, I want to accept Jesus, I want to encourage you today. We want to be part of that journey with you because it's a lifelong journey of following after Jesus. So I want you to encourage you, go to our website. It says Jesus right there. Click on that link, put your name in there, and we want to send you a Bible and be part of your life journey. So won't you do that today? Ask Jesus to be part of your life and surrender to yourself to him.